Hi everyone. Today I'd like to talk about how to check threads with ring and plug gauges. These are used to quickly and reliably do quality control on threaded parts, especially in high production environments. The ring gauges are used on external threads, while the plug gauges are used for internal threads. Before we get started, I'd like to thank KBC Tools for helping to make this video. They really like the educational content I make and wanted to support that, so they've generously provided all the tools that I'm using in this video. If you're in need of any supplies or tooling for your shop, check them out. I have a link to their website down in the description. Now let's get started. First of all, these do not measure the threads. They're what are known as go-no-go -go gauges and are made to the upper and lower limits of the pitch diameter for the thread. So what you're doing is comparing your threads to these known sizes. In the case of the ring gauges, the go gauge is the high side of the pitch diameter range and the no-go gauge is the low end. The gauges are color-coded for easy identification, green for go and red for no-go. And the no-go has a groove around the outside as well in case you're one of the 300 million colorblind people in the world. The color coding resin is actually pulling double duty by plugging access to the adjustment screw that's used for calibrating them. Like anything else, these will wear down over time. After all, you're rubbing metal against metal. That means they should periodically be checked for calibration by a competent professional. Not all ring gauges are adjustable, by the way, so if yours don't have this flexor and adjusting screw, they'll need to be replaced when they eventually wear. The good news is, the non-adjustable ones are significantly cheaper. I have three parts that I've made, one undersized, one that's in spec, and one oversized. If the go gauge does not thread on, you know your part is too big, and you need to make additional cuts. If it does thread on, the part is smaller than the high end of the pitch diameter range, although that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good part. You'll need to check it with the no-go gauge next. If that gauge does not thread on, you know the part is larger than the low end of the range and it should be in spec. However, if it does, then you've cut too far and the part is scrap. It's okay for the gauge to start threading onto the part. That's just the first threads hooking together and the extra clearance from the chamfer. You just don't want the gauge to thread on very far. Depending on how forgiving your quality control person is that day, anywhere from one to three threads is acceptable. But if the gauge and part thread together completely, even if it's rough going, that means the part is smaller than the gauge. This part is only undersized by seven ten thousandths of an inch or 18 microns, so it's quite tight and only threads on a few turns. But the ring gauge does go on more than it should. That illustrates that a part that's right on the cusp of the tolerance might be mistakenly passed. Regular viewers will know that I made a video a while back about why you should not check threads with the mating part. But this is different because these gauges are specifically made to meet the pitch diameter range of either an external or internal thread. A nut or screw from the hardware store is made to fit somewhere in its respective tolerance and will most likely be somewhere in the middle of that range. So testing the fit with a commercially made nut or screw does not necessarily mean your part is in tolerance. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one, as well as down in the description in case you haven't seen it. Now let's look at the plug gauges. These are used for checking internal threads, and in this case, the go gauge is the small end of the pitch diameter range, while the no-go side is the large end. For easy identification, the no-go gauge is shorter, which is probably also because it definitely should not thread that far into your part. These are not adjustable, but they are replaceable when they wear. Each end is held in with a taper, similar to Morse taper tooling. You can use a drift through this hole to remove the go gauge, and then pop out the no-go gauge with a long punch through the handle. Then just insert replacement gauge members. Like the ring gauges, there are cheaper versions available that do not have replaceable ends, and those would need to be replaced entirely when they wear. In practice, they're used in the same way as the ring gauges. You try to thread them into your part, and if the go gauge does not thread in, your thread is still too small. 
If it does, you're at least bigger than the small end of the range, and you then check it with the no-go gauge. If that doesn't thread in, you should be in spec. However, if it does, then your part's too big and it's scrap. Of course, I've also made three parts to show this set of gauges. One undersized, one in spec, and one oversized. I've identified these parts with grooves just for my sake while making the video, and I feel like I should address that for one very specific reason. Normally, when you see a threaded part that has a groove in it, that indicates a left-handed thread. One of the most common places you'll see this is on the fuel lines of oxy-fuel torches, whether it's acetylene or propane. In that instance, you really don't want to mix up those two hoses. So the oxygen side has right-handed threads, and the fuel side has left-handed, and will have that groove across the corners of the hex. You can see this as well on the left-handed side of this turnbuckle. Of course, this is far from universal, just a very common practice. You can find plenty of instances where right and left-handed threads exist together where they might be marked with an R and an L, or maybe just not marked at all, like bicycle pedals or the nuts on a bench grinder, for instance. I just felt this really should be mentioned in case it caused some confusion, and again, I only added grooves to these so I could tell my samples apart. They're all right-handed threads and serve no purpose other than being samples for this video. Likewise, the groove I showed earlier on the no-go ring gauge is also just for easy identification. It's still a right-handed thread. Let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of these gauges. The biggest advantage is they're faster and more consistent than measuring the pitch diameter with a thread micrometer or thread wires. Even experienced machinists will get varying readings on a thread micrometer when measuring the exact same thread while the three-wire method can be awkward for beginners, and it opens up the possibility of a math error when calculating the pitch diameter. Ring and plug gauges, on the other hand, require very little skill, so beginners, and even Justin from Quality Control, can use them with no issues. The biggest downside to them is the cost. At the time of this recording, these ring gauges were just over $100 each, and the plug gauge, just as you see it here, with both ends and the handle, was about $85. The replacement plug gauge members are about $35 bucks each. This is, in fact, cheaper than some thread micrometers, but keep in mind, you'll need gauges for every thread you plan on checking, so you can see how the costs could definitely add up. The price does vary a bit depending on the size of the thread, with smaller threads usually being relatively cheaper compared to larger threads. That only goes so far though. When you get to very small threads, the price on the gauges starts to climb again, similar to very small drills and end mills. I think in all of these cases it has to do with the fragility of the piece, the minuteness of its features, and the limited demand for them. Another con is that, again, these don't measure the threads for you. That means when they eventually wear, you may not notice immediately and pass parts that should be failed. They should be checked regularly for wear, although how often probably depends on usage. I would say at least yearly, but obviously if you're checking tens of thousands of parts during that year, the gauge will wear out faster than if you only check 50 parts per year. Speaking of wear, your cutting tool will wear over time, so external threads will get larger as the job goes on, and internal threads will get smaller. To account for this, I generally aim for the low end of the pitch diameter range on external threads, and the high end on internal ones. This is easy to do with frequent checking, even though you can't measure the threads directly. Just continually check while making small adjustments until the gauge fits. At this point, you should be near one extreme of your range, and if you move a little bit less than the total size of your range, you should be near the other extreme. You'll obviously want to check to make sure you didn't go too far, but assuming you didn't, this should allow for a fair amount of tool wear before you need to make adjustments. Thanks again to KBC Tools for helping to make this video. They really are a great company to work with, and they have a fantastic selection of everything you might need for your shop. Check out their links down in the description. If you have any questions or topics you'd like to see me cover in a future video, leave those down in the comments section below. 
While you're down there, hit that like and subscribe button if you think I've earned it, and please consider supporting the channel over on Patreon like the fantastic people you see on your screen right now. You might also want to check out these other videos. On the right, I have a playlist of all of my other videos on measuring tools. On the upper left, I have my most recent video, and on the lower left, there's the video I mentioned earlier about why checking threads with the mating part might not be the best idea. Thanks for watching everyone, I'll see you next time.